Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Shivkumar and in today's video we're going to try to control a stepper motor. What I have over here is a stepper motor driver. I have the stepper motor over here and <clears throat> I have a microcontroller that's going to control the pulse to the stepper motor and also the clockwise or anti-clockwise direction of the stepper motor. And I also have an encoder which can tell us the position of the stepper motor and I have a um, couple of these outputs connected to the probe which is connected to my oscilloscope and to my logic analyzer to see the pulse from what the microcontroller is feeding into the stepper motor driver and also what the encoder is giving out when while the stepper motor is rotating. So that's what this video is all about. The analysis, the connection and uh, the outputs and to see what all these switches might mean once I, you know, flip around with them uh, and see how, what really is happening when we connect them to the oscilloscope and what's the actual output. So let's get started. On my screen over here, I have an illustration of how the connection is. So uh, as you can see, uh, the left hand side is the stepper motor and the way you connect it is basically A plus A minus B plus B minus. So there's two types of winding and each time you send a pulse, which is a clock input over here, you're basically exciting, you know, the A phase or the B phase, the A phase and the B phase accordingly so that you're creating this positive negative uh, polarity and the motor keeps uh, rotating. And the faster you switch them, uh, the faster the motor turns. That's the reason why you have to pulse them because you're basically pulsing uh, the outputs, you're changing the polarity of A and B and accordingly the driver is doing all this for you. So it's taking this low voltage digital input and converting it into a high voltage, high power analog output that can drive the motor. So you need a driver for this because a microcontroller cannot have enough power to drive the motor. So this is what this driver is actually doing. So the connection is very straightforward. I have a voltage power source on the left hand side, which is uh, I'm connecting 12 volts to this. Uh, it draws around 1.5 amps. So we'll look, look into the data sheet of the stepper motor shortly. Uh, the stepper motor has four wires. Uh, they all are color coded. So based on the color coding, I have connected this to A plus A minus B plus B minus. Um, there are certain switches which can allow you to configure the driver for certain parameters, such as uh, the, the amount of current you want to limit. Uh, in this particular case, I'm limiting it to 1.6 amps. So the switches over here help me do that. So I have uh, all three on and the switch uh, and the SW over here uh, as off. So the configuration is all on the board itself. And once you read them uh, based on the motor that you're trying to excite and activate, uh, you might want to set the settings accordingly. And in the input, we have a clock plus and clock minus. All the minuses are connected to the ground. Uh, the plus is the clock pulse and it has a specific frequency. If, it's, if the frequency is too high, then the excitation might be too quick and the motor might stall. And if it's too slow, uh, then the motor will just, you know, rotate it very, very slowly. So depending on your needs, you have to, you know, choose the pulse uh, frequency uh, as per uh, your application. Now, if it's high, then the motor, then you have the second uh, output, which is the counterclockwise and uh, clockwise. So if it's high, then it moves, rotates clockwise. And if it's low, it rotates counterclockwise. So those are the two inputs, E and E plus and, uh, M and E minus is, uh, I'm not too sure exactly. I don't, I'm not um, connected them. Uh, and I don't, I think to get this working, you don't necessarily need the E and um, all right. So that's what the connection is all about. So in here, as I mentioned, this is the microcontroller that is now connected to the clock over here. And this is the clock um, pulse. This is the um, clockwise and counterclockwise pin. This is the anal this is the digital input side. And the digital input side is now con uh, is fed to the, uh, is, is now feeding information to the driver that will now control the output side. So as you can see on my screen, I have around 11.8 volts, 12 volts, 1.6 uh, amps is the current flowing through here. Uh, and in here, 
the motor is now rotating. It's rotating now clockwise, or actually anti-clockwise at this point in time. Uh, and if I pull the spin out, which is basically saying, you know, um, it's basically connecting the, claw, the thing to ground, it now moves in the other direction. So now it's moving in this direction, and then when I release it high, it's moving in one direction. So that's what this input signal is. So now let's look at the pulse from through a logic analyzer. And from the logic analyzer, the top one, the top black one is where the pulse is switching. And here you can see that it's got a beauty cycle of 50% and it's free and it's and I've got the frequency set to 500 hertz. And that's the input to the to the drive. So if you want to know how this drive is done, I'm going to show you my code. Uh, it's very straightforward. All I'm doing is basically toggling um, one of the pins as a general purpose input output pin from high to low. This is a Cortex M3 processor. You can do this with an Arduino. It doesn't matter. You can choose whatever device, whatever microprocessor you want. They all have general purpose input output pins. You set a timer and you basically set, you know, uh, on for a certain period of time and off for a certain period of time. In this particular case, you know, I generally uh, have fabricated my own microcontroller. It's a Cortex M3. I'm using it for a lot of motor control drivers. And it's got a little bit more capabilities. That's the reason why I'm using it, using uh, this particular processor as I'm using, I'm trying to, you know, uh, use this for other applications. And that's really it. But you can use any microcontroller which can generate this pulse. All right. So let's look at what the um, output of this on the oscilloscopes looks like. So what I have over here is that the oscilloscope right now is giving you this output, you know, which is basically constantly um, triggering. So when I basically do this, it's going high and low, high and low, right? So it's going basically positive, negative, positive, negative. Now, as you can see, this is a hobby level, you know, pro driver. It's going to have a lot of ripples. It's going to have a lot of harmonics. It's not the most smoothest waveform uh, that's out there. And that's why, as you know, you buy it for 20 bucks. Uh, ideally, this should be, you know, pretty much more smoother than having this level of, out this level of, um, you know, uh, the, the, the output is very, uh, it's got a lot of ripples. It's very, uh, it's not very smooth and it's, it's going to cause a lot of problems. Uh, in the long run, it can even, it may even damage the motor. Uh, but for, um, for, but for if you're on a hobbyist, you know, this would definitely work. It's just a matter of fact that if you're, you know, if you want to make it pass certain conditions and um, certain testings, uh, this particular driver may not necessarily perform as well. Um, it might need some little amount of filtering in order for it to work better, but it still works, right? Um, it said, it tells me that the base voltage is 7.2 volts. Uh, the maximum voltage is uh, 17, 17 and 18 volts. And the top to top is uh, 35 volts. That's peak to peak because they have these ripples. Uh, the frequency is around 16 hertz. Uh, is around 20 kilohertz. Uh, so it's, 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 uh, you know, moving and switching up and down very quickly. I've all I've done is basically connected to the a minus, um, a plus and a minus, uh, if I, and wherever there is a high and low in a plus and a minus, uh, B plus B minus will be in, you know, uh, just shifted, you know, around 90 degrees phase, uh, phase apart. So that's what we have from the oscilloscope. It's always good when you're using these hobby electronics. Uh, I didn't feel like, you know, you need to measure what the output is just because it works doesn't mean it's great. Now, once you start to measure these, these outputs, that's when you can come up with ideas to refine the design and make it more robust and reliable and all the cool stuff that goes with it. So that's the reason why, you know, instrumenting what this product actually does uh, using using the right instruments uh, can make a difference in, in either whether you want to use this driver or not. So let's look at the data sheet of the motor itself, because uh, the settings on that I have over here uh, is very relevant to the motor itself. So let me just uh, bring this up. What I'm using is the 5704X uh, O2 motor. That's what this is. Uh, and I'm still making it spin. And it's a NEMA 23 motor, uh, which means it's powerful. It's also got an encoder, which we'll talk about shortly, which tells us the exact positioning. So if I want to do some feedback control, and this could be used in you know in, in CNC machining, you could use this in, in 3D printing. You could use this in all sorts of applications as type of motor because you have very precision, very precise control over the position. And that's when you use a step of motor because of the position control uh, that it has. And these are all the 
parameters of this particular motor that I'm using. Number of leads is four, it's bipolar, and the weight is 0 0.48 kgs. And based on these parameters, uh, you can set the thing on the on the on the pre-driver. It tells you the current, it tells you the excitation, it tells you uh, what you need to do in order for this particular motor, which is compatible with this motor, and you configure the settings. Now, I also have the encoder in installed. So let's look at the encoder um, diagram. So when I basically click uh, the play button right now. Okay. So what we have over here is A and B. An encoder will give you A and B. Um, so let's have a look over here. So, so the bottom one of the pulses over here uh, of this is basically telling you the exact position. So you might have in a second, you know, each time it rotates every 20 degrees or maybe even 15 degrees, uh, it will trigger one of these things. So you know exactly the position. So sometimes you might want to have exact precision control. You might say, okay, this is zero degrees. I want to go to, you know, 15 degrees. So you know exactly when the next pulse is, uh, is triggered, you will know exactly that this is 15 degrees. But between one and the other, the AB encoder can tell you exactly how and where it is. So this will tell you whether it's moving clockwise or it's moving anti-clockwise based on which one is ahead and which one is not ahead. Uh, and accordingly, you can, you know, make the judgment. So the phase shifting between, you know, encoder A and encoder B, uh, which is, uh, let me look at the, let me show you the data sheet to show you what I mean by that. Um, not here. So the, the encoder attached to the stepper motor is the AT, uh, M AMT 10 series and uh, the data sheet of this basically will tell you uh, how you need to connect the the, um, the encoder but it also has this X A and B and based on this it will tell you whether you know it will give you the resolution it will also tell you you know where exactly that this X is clicking um, because the quadrature will always tell you whether it's a clockwise or anti-clockwise. Uh, that's what the quadrature signals will in with index showing counterclockwise rotation and the index will tell you exactly the precise um, uh, degree at which at which it is rotated and you can use that as a feedback if you want very high precision control and that's what this encoder does so whenever you're doing anything with stepper motors you would want to have an encoder attached to it so that you have very precise precision control over your position uh, and that's really it and that's what i have over here okay now that I've shown you the oscilloscope output, I've showed you the digital input, the pulse, uh, and I've also showed you what the encoder is doing, and this is rotating. <clears throat> Let's look at the code right now to see, you know, what I'm, what is this particular microcontroller doing over here? As I mentioned, I'm using the Cortex M3 LPC1769. It's a very straightforward code. Um, all I have is I'm basically configuring few of these pins as outputs. Uh, but you do this the same whether you're, whether you're programming an Arduino or not. Whenever you're gen dealing with a, with a general purpose input output pin, um, the, any of these pins have multiple properties, like multiple functionalities, uh, they, and you multiplex them. So the same pin can be used for I2C, can maybe be used for ISPI, maybe used for Ethernet, maybe used for CAN communication, maybe used for pulse width modulation. And, and many of them will also have general purpose input output. So the first part of my code is basically initializing this to general purpose input output. And the same would go whether you're programming an Arduino or any microcontroller for that matter of fact, is you're basically telling this pin, I want to multiplex you first for uh, this particular feature. And here I'm in telling you for you to be um, a general purpose input output pin. And that's function zero. And once it's once I've set the function of it, then I can set whether I want it to be an output or an input. So an input would be very helpful when I'm when I'm trying to decode the position of uh, my stepper motor encoder. So when I if I use a general purpose input output pin and use it as an input, I can basically say each time we go high, you know, trigger uh, give me inter trigger an interrupt, and that will tell me you know the position of it. But in this particular case, I am trigger I am setting this to be an output because I want to generate pulse. I don't want to receive any input. So I've set all of this as output. So one is for controlling the pulse, one is for controlling whether it's clockwise or, an or anti-clockwise or counterclockwise, and then you have the EN pin. And then I have something called as a cystic timer, which is if you're using any Cortex M3 processor, uh, they'll have a cystic handler. And it, and you basically tell how frequently you want this handler to be triggered. And each time the trigger handle is triggered, I'm just basically pulsing the uh, output of the pulse from high to low, low to high, high to low and vice versa because I'm constantly toggling the state and that's what's creating this pulse after every uh, you know so and so seconds uh, and I've set the frequency to basically be around you know a thousand um, thousand clicks per second 
something of that sort. So, 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 it's, so switching, it's not exactly accurate. It's probably less than that. Um, but you get the gist that, you know, I can set the frequency based on the parameters of my uh, motor. Um, too high a frequency might cause problems and too low a frequency might cause problems. Uh, it may not rotate. Now this is getting heated. So you can see that this is consuming a lot of power. And you can, as I mentioned, a lot of the energy might be wasted because of the way the power is delivered to this motor can also cause heating, unnecessarily heating. Uh, so that's what's happening over here. So this is the stepper motor, this is the driver. Um, and uh, if you want to control your own motor, perhaps you can use a hobby pre-driver. This is for, I think, less than, you know, 50 bucks you can get this. Um, I got this ages ago for controlling this motor. motor. Um, because I wanted it to apply it for my drone to calibrate the sensors and IMU basically saying that if I rotate this exactly 15 degrees will my gyroscope show me 15 degrees uh, and I wanted to basically map the gyroscope and IMU readings with my stepper motor so I basically created a plate put a drone on it and I made sure that if it rotated 15 degrees would it show me 15 degrees uh, with the speed of the motor that, is sh that I want correlate with the gyroscope angular angular acceleration and all that stuff was basically what I was trying to do I was mapping the stepper motor angular acceleration with the gyroscope acceleration trying to calibrate my drone that way that's how I was using this stepper motor um, back in the day uh, today I may not necessarily do this uh, but depending on the situation and the uh, um, and and the level of testing and, and calibration needed for a drone uh, I may you know pursue that level of testing again and that's why I bought the setup for me to calibrate my IMU readings with the angular velocity and with the with known reference angular acceleration angular velocity that I can generate from a stepper motor. All right, so this is getting hot, uh, which I'm not too sure should or should not be the case. Um, but I do also have a lot of circuitry around here. I have a metal thing underneath this for some of my circuits to magnetize and keep everything gripped onto the plat. So that might be causing some interference as well. Um, but yeah, that's really what we have over here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, this is a stepper motor um, driver. And I wanted to talk about basically how you want to set up this whole setup uh, so that you can create your own driver. What are the outputs? What are the inputs? What is the oscilloscope reading? What a digital, what the logic analyzer is telling me and how my pulse is basically fed into this driver and doing just basic analysis so that uh, you understand whether this driver is suited for you, whether or and if it's not, perhaps, you know, buy a better driver that is a little bit more expensive that can ripple out and clear up all the noises that this particular driver is generating um, based on your application. That might be a requirement and that might be needed. Right. So I hope you like this video. Do uh, subscribe. Um, my name is Anthony Shivkumar. And once again, thank you for watching. Um, stay safe.